Welcome to a lesson on the Volterra Integral Equation. A common integral equation is the Volterra Integral Equation, which is x of t equals f of t plus the integral from zero to t of g of the quantity t minus tau times x of tau d tau, where f of t and g of t are known functions and x of t is an unknown function we wish to solve for. We want to express x of t without the integral. To find x of t, we apply the Laplace transform to both sides of the equation. On the left, the Laplace transform of x of t is equal to big X of s. On the right, the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to big F of s. And then we have plus the Laplace transform of the integral, which is the definition of the convolution of x of t and g of t, which when we use the formula below, is equal to the Laplace transform of x of t times the Laplace transform of g of t. Again, this is coming from our notes below where the Laplace transform of, this is the convolution of f of t and g of t, is equal to the Laplace transform of f of t times the Laplace transform of g of t. So going back to our work, the Laplace transform of x of t is equal to big X of s, and then times the Laplace transform of g of t, which is equal to big G of s. And now we need to solve the equation for big X of s. To do this, we subtract big X of s times big G of s on both sides of the equation, then we factor out big X of s on the left, which gives us big X of s times the quantity one minus big G of s equals big F of s. And then we divide both sides of the equation by one minus big G of s, which gives us big X of s equals big F of s, divided by the quantity one minus big G of s. And now to find X of t, we know we need to take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. Let's take a look at a specific example. We want to solve x of t equals e to the power of negative t plus the integral from zero to t of hyperbolic sine of the quantity t minus tau times x of tau d tau, meaning we want to eliminate the integral and then solve the equation for x of t. The first step is to take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. On the left, the Laplace transform of x of t is equal to big X of s. On the right, the Laplace transform of e to the negative t using our table below is equal to one divided by the quantity s plus one, and then we have plus the Laplace transform of, this is the convolution of x of t and hyperbolic sine t, which again, using our notes below, is equal to the Laplace transform of x of t times the Laplace transform of hyperbolic sine t. And the Laplace transform of x of t is equal to big X of s times the Laplace transform of hyperbolic sine t which is equal to one divided by the quantity s squared minus one. Notice on the right I use the commutative property to change the order of the multiplication. And now we need to solve the equation for big X of s. To do this, the next step is to subtract the product involving big X of s on the right on both sides of the equation, and then factor out big X of s. This gives us big X of s times the quantity one minus one divided by the quantity s squared minus one equals one divided by the quantity s plus one. And now we divide both sides of the equation by one minus one divided by the quantity s squared minus one. And now we simplify the complex fraction on the right. One way to do this would be to multiply the numerator and denominator by the LCD, which is s squared minus one, which is shown here on the right in the blue box. Multiplying the complex fraction by the quantity s squared minus one over the quantity s squared minus one, the result is the quantity s minus one divided by the quantity s squared minus two. And we can break this up into two separate fractions, which gives us big X of s equals s divided by the quantity s squared minus two minus one divided by the quantity s squared minus two. And now to solve for x of t, we take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. Let's do this on the next slide. The inverse Laplace transform of big X of s on the left is equal to x of t, which is what we are solving for on the right to find the inverse Laplace transform of s divided by the quantity s squared minus two, we use the formula in the table involving hyperbolic cosine, where the inverse Laplace transform of s divided by the quantity s squared minus omega squared is equal to hyperbolic cosine omega t, where in our case, omega squared is equal to two, and therefore omega is equal to square root two, giving us an inverse Laplace transform of hyperbolic cosine of square root two t. And then we have minus the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by the quantity s squared minus two. To find this inverse Laplace transform, we use the formula involving hyperbolic sine, where the inverse Laplace transform of omega divided by 
the quantity s squared minus omega squared is equal to hyperbolic sine of omega t. Notice in our case, omega squared is equal to two, but we don't have square root two or omega in the numerator, and therefore we need to take the fraction of one over the quantity s squared minus two and multiply by the square root of two over square root two, which is just equal to one, and we can write this as one over square root two times square root two divided by the quantity s squared minus two, and therefore the inverse Laplace transform is one divided by square root two times hyperbolic sine of square root two t. So our solution is x of t equals hyperbolic cosine of square root two t minus one divided by square root two times hyperbolic sine of square root two t. I hope you found this helpful.